Hi everyone and welcome back, welcome to my playlist and here we are talking about NestCS Advance and we are talking about module 1 and in the module 1 the next topic we are going to talk about is a custom logger. So you already know that uh, in the Node.js world there are lots of uh, logging solution available like uh, Winston is really very popular logger which provides a different transport like you can send a logs to a file, logs to a console, logs to a maybe elastic uh, log stash. It's like a transport mode. Your log is being generated by your application and now to aggregate, analyze all those things, you sometimes need to transport your logs to either console, that is a default. Otherwise, you can send it to the files and you just use log rotate to rotate the files and delete and purge the old files on your server. Otherwise, like if you are using serverless, like Lambda and all, then you need to transport your logs to either console or to uh, some other third party platform so you can analyze. So you can see this is how we create a simple logger, right? Winston.createLogger and it asks you to all the different transports. And if you have done the simple Node.js Express application, there we use Winston to log your console logs or send it to logs to the files, error log, debug log based on that. So similarly, we already know how to do the logging in the NestJS, uh, which is provided by NestJS logger. Uh, Nest, I mean, there is a logger module is already available in the NestJS common. But let's say if I want to create my own logger module, then there are multiple solutions. Nest Winston is one of it. Like either you create your custom logger service class and then use a logger Winston uh, logger only there inside that and then expose that service and module and use that module in your application but somebody like okay like me or myself or some other developers like this can publish their own modules like if you see what this package contains i would uh, i will try to show you what this package contains so this guy built this as a asynchronous uh, this custom module what this module is providing under the hood it is also using winston but you don't need to write a wrapper for uh, using winston.create logger instead of that that guy created a simple nest.js package nest.js module which is under the hood is uh, using the winston and it is exposing only these simple methods for root and for root async so you don't need to worry about providing configuration but if you see the code if you see this is the winston module and here you can see this is how we are going to also write our dynamic module this is very important and this covers only inside the advanced stuff here what we are doing is we are creating the winston provider right and we are passing these custom options which we are going to ask the consumer because i'm going to use this module for my logging i will in, in, i will include this module from the npm and then i will call this for root method and for root async if you remember we have a type rm module dot for root type rm module dot for root async similarly nestjs type rm is built by some nestjs people this is a random module which is developed by some another developer who is exposing this as a dynamic module so while you are using it you can use this for root and for root async method and what it is doing is if you see create winston provider inside providers so what it is doing you can see it should be using one service you can say return winston logger service and you can see it is using this create logger which is coming from winston so what is this in this inside this package nothing it's just like some structure you need to create a providers you need to expose for root and for root async method and then under the hood you are using the same thing you are using this provider and use factory to pass the instance and these login options you are going to pass as a dynamic module options okay and here this you are injecting so if i want to use this well, how would i use this in my example so somebody has built this module we are i'm also going to build my own custom module let's say uh, in the next video that's a custom dynamic module which you can consume using the same like okay my custom module dot for root and for root async now if you look into this uh, provider here it is just calling the instance here it is, it is just creating a winston logger and calling the create logger method and passing the logger options so what it is taking it is doing the same thing it has created this module and taking these all these options from you 
that's it so it's not like a rocket science somebody has done it's only about instead of this you will be doing winston module dot for root and for root async and you will be passing this module configuration dynamically because you can decide for different environment you want to have a console transport file transport and all and this module is just same now now you might be thinking okay it's very complex code and all no it's like same structure you will be using to build any dynamic module in your application and here it is using the create logger and you will be using create nest js winston logger and all that we will talk about so how to implement how to use this let's say i built this module and i just published it how you will use it you will use winston logger dot for root and inside that you are going to pass the options and then in your classes in your services or controllers this is how you will inject the logger provider inject winston module provider logger and then you can just do logger dot config logger dot log logger dot debug and all and if you want to use dynamic initialization asynchronous initialization you can just pass your winston config class also and talking about the some advanced example like you can also pass some options right okay yeah here it is winston module dot poor root and now you will be thinking okay this we already know i mean winston provides it this module just helping you to create this as a simple separate module dynamic module and in the poor root you can pass all your transport all your configuration that's it and then all these are logging methods and you will inject this uh, logger service and then you can just do logger.log debug verbose one right so same thing like for now what i will do is we can also try to build this i will what i will do is instead of uh, doing this we can try to replicate this right whatever this module is doing i will try to put this in the dynamic module first i wanted to talk about very simple dynamic module let's say creating a simple http library and then we will implement this logger module in same fashion like the dynamic module and we will use this for root and for root async method so let's talk about the dynamic module hi everyone so uh, let's talk about the dynamic module i mean uh, in past i published this uh, blog which talks about okay how 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 to create a nestjs dynamic module and why is the need of uh, creating it for now you might uh, you might try to read it we have already written this kind of a code where you are we are creating a our own database module and we are doing the dynamic initialization using for root async and because here the dependencies are coming from config module so this is we are doing a use factory and that is fine here we will come to this example also first we'll try to understand the very basics of it let's say in my application i want to build uh, my own package let's say app email then we will come to the logger also simple example i will go with the simple examples first so let's say i have app email and here i'm creating the same stuff i can copy this from ts config this is app email and inside app email i will open this in the terminal and here i i'm going to talk about some bit of this node mailer so we can just add pnpm add node mailer okay and we are going to create an email service and email module and then we will see what is the need of a dynamic module so here i will create a source inside this i will create an email service dot ts and then email module dot ts email dot module dot ts okay so email module uh, we already know how to write a module we will just create a simple module and here we can say imports what happened this should be coming from nest gs common and then we have a imports whatever you are importing controllers provider and an export class email module and now what this module we are you creating for we are creating this module so that we can send an email right a simple externalizing this logic injectable and we are writing export class 
email service and this class will have a simple constructor and will have a simple logic okay how to send email so let's say send email is a function it is providing us and here we will be using node mailer this dot node mailer transport so to initialize the node mailer transport first we need to create a variable private node mailer transport is of type mail which should be coming from well, mail is the type which we can get from export let me see export import everything as email from node mailer can i get something from this node mailer lib email let me see or here this is only typing because maybe i'm using some old package node mailer let's say any node mailer transport always we get uh, confused with this so private read only this is the private variable and i'm going to initialize it inside a constructor so i can say node mailer transport equal to here i will be calling create transport create transport we can get from node mailer this typescript compiler sometimes lazy it doesn't give me autocomplete and i need to manually write it which i don't like so this we are getting from node mailer and node mailer should give me the create transport but it is also not there okay let's see we need to add the types also so we, i can do it cnpm add types for node mailer okay so we what we are doing is we are trying to create a transport so that we can send an email create transport and inside create transport it, it will ask couple of options to me right so what options we are going to pass is the service if you can see the the variables and now how we can get all these parameters we already have this config service can we use that so i will just write inside config default i need a email service user and password right so i can create one interface and say okay email and this will give me email config i'm not going to write email uh, config module again we can use our config module inside email config we are going to pass three parameters export interface email config it will have a three parameters like service name you can call it as a service name username and password because we are creating a transport we are we need to specify all the attributes for uh, email smtp right like uh, node mailer is not going to send an email you need to pass the trans, trans uh, the smtp details so this is going to be string required this is going to be string required this is going to be string required and now email config and this is our default here we can specify email and here service name empty username empty and password empty and inside config service as you know this was required so email here we, what do we have service name that should be coming from the config service right uh, so i can just directly say is process.env env dot service name so we need to prefix what this service is email service name so we are just configuring that inside a config service and then we have two more attributes one is a username another is a password so env dot 
email username let's use these uh, variables email username and email password it is complaining because this can be undefined right so and these are required for typescript that's a warning so that's an error we need to specify now what we can do we can build the config module and we can we already have a dependency or we can add the dependency of config module inside our uh, app email module so let's go here dev config it's already there right so what we need to do is i will just build this package also it's not showing me it's a problem nx console is not showing me the updated one or i didn't update the package json here package json it should be email i have saved it now go to the next console app email i will build this again because now i should be getting the updated config package in this application okay so this is not coming from config package we already know these errors which we can fix inside email service now what all parameters we need to pass so we already have a config service which we can import from the config and here i will import config service and we can inject that inside a constructor private read only config service this is my config service and this config service now i can use how simply config service dot get i have this parameter let's say email so inside email i will get service name and what are the other parameters auth i mean these are the attributes which we are passing in create transports so auth will take two argument user if i remember correctly now config service dot get this config service is coming from config package email dot username and then i have another argument is pass so i will use the config service again dot get dot email dot password that's it so this is how we are accessing our we build the email service now if i want to send an email what i will do is this dot email transport this dot node email transport dot send email and i need to pass the options which we are passing here options like okay who whom to send email options and let's see if i can get the type yes it's coming mail dot options and this also we can specify the type for this mail transport this is also of type mail is it send email okay now our service is completely typescript safe we can use it in different way import everything as email as mail from this also is fine now i just created this uh, mail uh, service now we can create a simple module inside this what we are going to import config module third party module which we are getting from another package and then we have email service and this is a package which so we need to export it also so that other modules can use it so we will use exports email service that's it that's our uh, simple uh, email module but now let's see what is the the problem with this i mean this is how we were building our config module and all and there was no issues now we are talking about building something dynamic module here you can see we are using this config service to pass some username password and authentication credentials but do you think these credentials are going to be same going to change i think they are global and they will always stay same as long as we use this particular service so why can't we just create a dynamic module which takes these options uh, at the module level and we don't need to specify it anywhere so this is the version one okay this is the version one i will just try to build this 
the email and now i think our will should pass i think there is some uh warning should be here big service you can consume it using this dot config service and i will build this again so this is our simple email module we have created now this is the the baseline one i mean this is how we were doing it if you want to use it then what you will do anywhere you will just import this email module which is giving you the email service and you can just directly pass these uh, email options and you can call the send email method the only thing is in the consumer application we need to populate these environment variables through dot env that's it okay rest everything will work now i want to make this as a dynamic module so this is you can say version one i will just create a new folder so that you can you guys can look into this okay now i will be changing these module and the service i want to create email module as a dynamic so i will change the email module first and then email service so inside our email module we can have a simple a method so this is our module right now we want to create it as a dynamic module if you google how to create a dynamic module it's all about okay you will replace everything and you are going to you are going to return some methods from this so this is going to be a global module so you will just uh, close this this is going to be a global module this is how you create it and then export class we already have it so export class email module inside this you will create a static method like because you don't want to create instance of email module class before calling the the for root and for root async method so now let's create a register method you can also build create a register register async method there is no convention that you should use for root and for root async if we will also change it and it is going to take some options uh, let's put any and then we will just so what it is going to do is dynamic module okay i need to import the dynamic module my typescript compiler is little lazy so here i need to do nest js common and from there like there is a module so i can add a dynamic module here also and what this function is going to return its function is going to return dynamic module okay and inside what it is going to return it is going to return a structured same object same module which contains okay the module services and all so what it is returning this is the module it is returning email this is the class sorry email module it is it will be returning and the providers now if you remember we talked about the the dependency injection and we talked about the custom providers like uh the custom string based token injection and all and uh, we will specify our providers let's say i will be providing something provide email config options that's a, like a simple string so i will create some interfaces also here i will just call it as email dot interface dot ts and here we can just create a simple string based token and options which you are going to pass export interface what do we want is we want to just globally pass these uh, service name and username password instead of at service level because these things are common and not going to change so it's like a service is string and then we have user is of type string and then we have passes of type string i think it's a uh, let's keep it a user and pass so these are the email options so here we are creating custom provider string based custom provider so provide email config option and what is the value and here the use value is use value is the email options which you have created options whatever you are passing and this type is email options email option contains service username and password right and you might be having your own email service also 
right so you have created a simple module now what you are saying is if you want to consume this module at anywhere what you can do is you can call register method and you can pass all these different options so at the consumer level where i'm going to consume this this is how i can do it and at this config service because at config service also we need to inject these options this is a string token uh, based provider so how will i inject it in the service this is my email service currently i'm doing it at the config service config service is giving me but i don't want to depend on to that so i can just simply say is private read options and i will say email options and here i need to inject it this config options inject email config options and this is private options email options i will import this thing options now we will use it to access these attributes options dot service options dot user options dot password inject i can import so this is like you can say a revamp definition okay why it is complaining again inject email config options private options okay i can simply say we don't need to pass this dot because this is not an option this is not a, a variable of this okay let me just clean this up that is fine this is what it is saying unable to resolve signature parameter ta, 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 ta. import config options this is already we have configured it and these are the options we are passing email options config service and private options email options i mean we can ignore all those things nothing important this is how we are injecting the dynamic module right so what we are doing is here we created a custom provider email config options this is like an injectable token you have created and the value of the token is these dynamic options so at globally what you did is you exposed the register method now let's say if i want to use this email module in my nest js app what i will do is i will import email module call the register method and pass the options and those options contains the service name user and password that's it and rest if this internal service of this package is already using this config options to configure the transporter the email transport right and you can send email so now how how would you do it like uh, email service let's say i will build this also I'm not sure let me see define the provider in the same module scope exporting the provider ta -ta -ta. i mean our module is already global I will try to see this uh, TypeScript error, but now how can we use it? We already have this uh, email module. I will go to my application and I will import it. So uh, I mean, we can just uh, skip this warning. Now it is able to. We are able to build this, this email. And now, how do I use it in my application? That's important, right? That's what we are doing inside domain module. Go to domain module, and I will import this uh, email module from first i need to import add this as a package right inside package same as the config i need to add dev email okay and at the root i can just do pnpm install or you can build this so it will get this definition available in this application go to your domain module and inside domain module i can import from dev email and i can just import the email module why it doesn't export okay the thing is i'm not exporting things properly there inside source i need to have an index.ts and i need to export all these things export everything from email interface export everything from 
export everything from email module export everything from what else we have service so these are things we are exporting i will build this again and i will build my application again so that i can get the definition of email module correctly i will go to the app npm run build because this is dependent on four modules now four packages so it will build this and then i think it has included the definition and now email module is also coming this is the version 2 we are writing okay now i can do is email module dot register you can see we can see this register method coming up right and inside register what we need to pass email options if you see the definition it takes email options this is the, the package we have written right we need to pass service user and password and here we can use so what we need to do is we need to pass this uh, service username and password from our service so this is how we are passing register and service name username and our password so this is how you will register this email module in your application okay now what happens is you might be thinking why i'm not passing these values dynamically from the process.env or using the config module because if i will pass this from the process.env that won't work because if you are going to pass these values either hard code it then this will work because we are expecting the values but if you are passing that, that from the config module you are dependent on another module to resolve first and pass the values then it will become asynchronous modules right then you need to use asynchronous configuration here right now i will just pass these this will work so every module, let's say email module also needs to expose register async method so that I can pass these service user and password dynamically by getting it from the config module. So I need to expose another method with the help with the register method. So I will go to my email module there and I will try to customize my implementation for dynamic consumption because nobody will be, not everyone will be passing these configuration directly so i will be having another method which is register async it's going to be fun right register async and it will take a email async option i think email async options we are going to create and that's an interface so email async options are which we need to import and inject so email async options i will try to define this and we'll also need to understand how it works now what we need to return email module and providers here we are what we are providing is email config options here we need to use use factory because we are getting these options of this dynamic module dynamically so here options which we are getting dot use factory okay so for that we need to just go a little off track and need to define this we might initially con confused how to define these options this is the dynamic module options this is how we create we just made this email async option email options asynchronous that's it by using use factory and inject and it is using the same module metadata which is coming from this nest js okay let's import all these things and here now we got the email async options this we can import and what we need to do is here we are writing register async method so module and then provide email config options use factory options dot this is options dot use factory and then inject because we need to inject what we are injecting is options dot inject okay.
and we are passing email service and we also need to export the email service so that everywhere I can use it at the consumer level okay import module is this and what we are importing is options dot imports these are like that uh, default implement default definitions we are importing from the options and now register async is ready okay so how you are going to call this now at the consumer you are going to call you are going to import the import this from the config module so let's see at the consumer level and try to understand it so here i will build this again so under the hood this register sync is same as uh, register method the difference is this use factory inject here we are using use factory instead of use value because it also accepts the additional uh, values which are being passed from the config module array of additional modules you can pass with this and uh, now we have this email module which can be invoked asynchronously we can now use the various configurations to call this so let's go to our app module ta -ta -ta, domain module i'm saying and here instead of this i can call register sync now register sync is not taking it is taking a email async options right which is not same as the email options so here we need to just change our implementation it is same as uh, this is what we are doing for root right inside for root if you remember that was also our dynamic module we have written inside our database i'm just showing you another reference here we have written this db module and we have provided we we, we just created this root for root method to just hide the implementation of a type ORM module and we were also doing the same thing passing the config service and all domain module here for root async I mean register async and then we can just pass the method here we need to import imports config module okay this would be an object inside this we are going to do lots of things here let's say imports so here we are going to pass config module because that is the module that is going to give us the configurations import and inject what we are injecting the config service and then use factory what happened use factory and this use factory is going to take config service instance config service and it is going to return me all these values okay it is going to return me all these options what i'm saying is let's say what we need is service so how we can get it using config service this config dot get dot email dot service so now we are doing the same thing is the only thing is we are getting these things dynamically from the config module so same thing we are doing config dot get dot email dot username password and this should be password or it's just a pass so the config dot get dot email dot password so same thing we are doing just what we are doing here is we are just using use factory because it's a dynamic initialization and we are dependent on the config module so first we are importing config module injecting the config modules config service we got the config service so we can initialize it like this so use factory is giving us the async options you can see it is providing us these async email options and if you see this method register async this email option is same as the email options that it is just only the asynchronous version of email options which you are going to get from the config factory provider because factory provider is returning that and while writing it's fun mm -hmm. but uh, you will take some time to digest this logic how it really working but this is like the register sync another mechanism another way of doing it you can use register in that way you need to pass the hard-coded values 
it is same as the type rm module dot four root and four root async four root async for four root async you can be dependent on a config module because that is a dynamic initialization that we are doing here in the database package if you see my db module here i'm dependent on the config module accessing the config service and getting the config module options dynamic module options from this method you can see what it is doing is it is returning this is giving me the type or module options right similarly we are getting the config module options from this factory method here if you look into this factory method what this factory method is returning it is returning the email options like async version of the email options this is what it is returning cost source username password so this is the version 2 of our creating dynamic module and using it so here we are not only creating that here we created a separate uh, mono repo workspace package app email now we are consuming this is the version 1 very simple one version 2 we introduce this register and register async method and now then we are consuming it in our application using this okay now let's talk about the version 3 of it uh, a little bit advanced of this in the next video.